Welcome to the BioBalance HealthCast, Episode 576. Hormone replacement is linked to lower mortality in women. BioBalance HealthCast features conversations about anti-aging medicine. Your host is Dr. Kathy Moffat, Medical Director of BioBalance Health and a leading expert in treating symptoms of aging. Dr. Maupin is the author of The Secret Female Hormone, the seminal work about testosterone replacement therapy for women, and Got Testosterone, the award-winning book for men that helps men choose the most effective and safe form of testosterone replacement. These books are available on Amazon or from Dr. Maupin's office at BioBalance Health in St. Louis and in Kansas City. Dr. Maupin's office is currently accepting new patients. Welcome to the BioBalance HealthCast. Today we're going to talk about how estrogen can save your life and help you lead a longer life. Now, every once in a while when I come out of my office, I hear somebody saying, I don't care if my estrogen pellets make me die of something. I'm going to take them because I want a quality of life, quality life because I feel so much better. I feel so much more like myself that I'm going to keep taking these forever. Well, I usually try to nicely correct them that this treatment is not going to shorten your life. Estrogen replacement in women after menopause lengthens your life and lowers your mortality from many different illnesses. But the one we're going to talk about today is heart attack and heart death, death from cardiac arrest. It does help you at keep your arteries clean and it helps your heart stay healthy throughout your life. So while you're premenopausal, you make it, you make estrogen, and it is protecting you then. And men don't make estrogen until they're older, and then it's still not protecting them. But in any case, we have an advantage over men. When we hit menopause, our advantage goes away. We start collecting goo in our blood vessels, and we start getting atherosclerosis, and we catch up pretty quickly to men. And that makes our mortality go up after menopause for heart disease. So when I'm talking about heart disease, I'm not talking about arrhythmias, which I consider an electrical problem. Women have a lot of those, but that's not what we're talking about. We're talking about plumbing. We're talking about blood vessels. To keep your heart going every day, all day long, just think about it. It never rests. You have to have plenty of oxygen and a really good blood supply to the heart. And that comes from the vessels that are not the blood inside your heart, but the vessels that go outside the heart and feed the muscle. So basically, you have to give a lot of oxygen to that muscle that's always working. It doesn't sleep. So when we have estrogen, the estrogen keeps the pipes clean. The arteries are clean. They don't collect plaque. In general, someone who has a good estrogen level before menopause has cleaner vessels than women who have a low estrogen level before menopause. And they have a greater advantage. And the, um, the study that came out in March 2017, which sounds like a long time ago, but in the world of um, research, it's not. The American College of Cardiology, March 8, 2017, pu- published a study that said that hormone replacement is associated with lo- lower mortality. They also said that it also decreases the rate or the risk for dementia, osteoporosis, cancer, heart disease, Parkinson's disease, autoimmune diseases, and poor immunity, and which leads to death from infections, both viral and bacterial. But it's always been hard to find an article that says, yes, estrogen saves you from having a heart attack which is like seemingly new information to most people, but certainly not to me. I mean, when I, I've always had good estrogen levels, but when my ovaries were taken out, my cholesterol went up. And my uh, eye doctor said I had cholesterol in the back of my, on my retina. Well, three or four months later, I started estrogen pellets and testosterone pellets. And when I went back to my eye doctor the next year, he said, what happened? Your cholesterol... Um, not implants, but your cholesterol um, collections on the back of your retina are gone. And I said, well, I started estrogen and testosterone. He goes, well, I didn't know that it did that. I said, I did not take a statin. I didn't really lose weight, although I did right after that. But I, but I definitely improved 
my cholesterol and improved my plaque because that's all that is, is just plaque. So when I started the estrogen, that saved me. Shortly after that, one of my friends who was um, a relatively young man, 48 years old, who was a surgeon and, and a wonderful um, person, he took care of all kinds of people who couldn't get taken care of by anyone else. He was just, he's very kind, did home visits and was a wonderful surgeon. Anyway, this guy died at 48 with no, no warning, just poof, that was it. And it scared me. So here I was, I knew that I'd, I'd, the cholesterol had cleared, but there was a new test out called a cardiac calcium scan. This is back in 2002. So I signed my husband and me up to have that test done to see if we had plaque. And at that time, he was 52 and I was 48 at that, at that point. So I went in and had the scan done, and they were like, no, no plaque, it's gone. It was all cleaned up. I had no plaque. My husband didn't have plaque either at that time. And um, in any case, we were at low risk for having any kind of uh, cardiac problem from atherosclerosis or hardening of the arteries. You, it's whatever you want to call it. It's basically goo in your blood vessels that keeps blood from going through your vessels. It makes the, the vessel smaller so that it has to push harder, which raises your blood pressure. So at that time... I learned the power of estrogen, and it cleaned up my vessels. And I've had another one at age 63, which I'm due for another one because I just turned 67. So, but I had one at 63, which was also zero. So, and my cardiologist said, oh, yeah, that's because you're on estrogen. I went, really? So this is pretty much the article that he was actually referring to. So I try to tell my patients that because they're taking estrogen, they are lengthening their life, and testosterone as well. They both lengthen your life. They also increase the quality of your life. Because when you start getting plaque on your blood vessels, you can't do as much. Your stamina goes down. You can't go to high altitudes. You can't exercise with your grandchildren. You're out of breath. You're miserable. I mean, and, and all of your tissues respond by shrinking. So you don't have a healthy body if you're not getting oxygen to every area, and that's what it means to have atherosclerosis. So um, when we're young, our hormones make us bulletproof. Basically, our immune system's working, our sex sexual system's working, everything's working perfectly. There's, you know, we just take it for granted. I, too bad we can't go backwards, and then we'd appreciate being young. But... Hormones are, are the, two, the two hormones, estrogen and testosterone, are the two hormones that keep us young. And I talk about the diseases of aging that happen when you, stop take, when you stop making estrogen and testosterone in my books, The Secret Female Hormone for Women and Got Testosterone for Men. Um, they're both on Amazon. I describe the diseases that can be avoided by having your hormones replaced in the healthiest fashion, which I do in pellets. So um, the article had, this article by the uh, cardiologist cited uh, that women who took estradiol just for hot flashes and vaginal dryness, but it was oral or patch or a, another form, any other form of estrogen, um, they decreased their risk of death from atherosclerosis almost in half. Um, part of the problem that we deal with now is there is a, there is a um, belief that estrogen is dangerous, and that was because there was a faulty study called the WHI study done by the NIH in 2002. And basically, because the headline said hormones cause um, breast cancer and heart disease, people didn't read the whole, whole research or the study. And doctors just took people off estrogen. And I remember that day because we had women who self-treated self themselves, went off their estrogen after years of being on it, called their office screaming and crying and hysterical because they couldn't go off of it because it made them feel normal. And now they felt crazy and hot flashes and they were, they were truly miserable. That was back when I was just, I was just a, a gynecologist and I wasn't um, a hormone replacement specialist. And... Um, <clears throat> 
I did not stop any of my patients on a, that were taking estrogen because I believed that it made them healthier. And in my experience, it did make them healthier. So if you look at it, if I look at a research article and I read it, although this research article said, basically if you read it, it said Provera, which is a synthetic progest progestin, it was the bad guy, not the estradiol. If you read it, you would know that. But basically, I look at studies, and if they say something totally opposite of what I see in my own patients and their response to a drug or a hormone, then I have to question that study. Either they use people as their subjects that were genetically different than my population, that's possible, or their conclusions were wrong. Their conclusion was right about Pro progest Provera, Provera is a nasty drug that I have not used since for a very long time. And it does cause problems with both cholesterol, heart disease, and breast cancer. But estradiol does not. And that is not the bad guy. So what happened is the whole country went off their estrogen for no apparent reason, except maybe my practice. So um, 15 years later, we finally get the right information that says that estrogen saves lives, saves us from uh, heart disease, which is the biggest killer of women. It's way beyond breast cancer. Um, but it also saves us from osteoporosis, stroke, and even uh, types of cancers. It is not a cancer causer. So when the women heard, or the doctors heard, that you that shouldn't take estrogen, that's all they heard, in 2002, women couldn't get a prescription for estrogen. 60% of the menopausal women took estrogen before that, and 23% took uh, estrogen in 2012. So 12 for 10 years later, um, that whole the whole group of women who had been taking estrogen stopped, and um, most women did not take it after menopause. And in the follow-up. Um, period of eight years, 6% of the women died that were not taking it, higher than the, the rate when they were taking it. It's hard for me to describe, sorry. During the study period on estrogen replacement, uh, the people who took estrogen were 30% less likely to die of heart disease than the women who were not on estrogen. That's really the bottom line. Estrogenized women also had lower rates of diabetes, high blood pressure, high cholesterol, and lower rates of plaque on their cardiac calcium scan, which was then, in 2012, being done on a lot of women. Uh, it wasn't a new thing like it was in 2002 when I had my first one done. So the lower rates of plaque have to do with lowering cholesterol levels, especially LDL, but it also increases your production of nitric oxide. Uh, women who have a good uh, estrogen level before menopause uh, compared to men, uh, women have 10 to 12 years younger vessels and heart than men who uh, are the same age. So when, they, when women have estrogen, we have an advantage over men. Our heart and our vessels are healthier. When we stop it, we go right up to the same risk as men who don't make or have estradiol. Um, the thing is, is that women can take estradiol to help their, their uh, cholesterol and their heart, and we should be telling people that. It saves your heart and your vessels, and it increases your lifespan in many different ways, but primarily this study was talking about heart disease. So if you're in the quandary and you still believe the lies that the NIH WHI study told you, you probably should pull it up and read the whole thing. And if you can't, you should have somebody who's a, who's a medical person read it for you and try to interpret the data. But I, I will tell you that it has been countered in many other studies since that time. So if you're thinking about estrogen and you have symptoms, you have sexual dysfunction, you have pain on intercourse, you, you have hot flashes, you don't sleep all night, that's that will be treated with estrogen, but you will also be lengthening your life. You will not be shortening it. And, to, and adding testosterone even adds to that health and lengthening of your life. So consider the fact that we have now disproven 
a bad study, and it's many years later, almost 20, and we're now reassuring you that it is healthy to take estradiol and testosterone. I want to change, change the talk about this and change what people believe because one headline shouldn't have this much power, and it did. So get back to living your life and having a healthy long life and take your replacement hormones. Thank you. Email your questions or comments to podcast at biobalancehealth.com. You can find the Biobalance HealthCast on iTunes and on YouTube. For more information about bioidentical hormone pellet therapy and other reverse aging solutions, visit biobalancehealth.com or call 314-993-0963. You can find Dr. Maupin on Twitter at Dr. Kathy Maupin and on Facebook at facebook.com slash biobalancehealth.